Um, Tony McKenna for House of Scots Television Association of Dean's Barbers. This one here, if you don't recognise his voice already, where have you been? Um, voice of everything, Muay Thai, MMA. I've done my research. The voice of the Barclays Centre as well for many years, and now Matthew Watson's Master Ceremony is ringing on to call it whatever you will, Mr. David Diamante. This is an honour for me. It's an honour for me to be here in Liverpool, man, having a great time. Are you enjoying it? Yeah, um, big cigar man, you've got your own cigar company as well. I do. How did that come about before we go into the. You know, I just, I've always loved cigars, uh, did a lot of travel, learned a lot about cigars, and Brooklyn, where I live, didn't have a cigar bar. Uh, so I put one, and that's it. It's been there 10 years now, so it's been a lot of fun. You've been in the puffin' room here in Liverpool. Oh, yeah. How did you find that? Oh, lovely place. Really yeah. nice. Good selection, actually, too. Yeah. yeah, of course, here you guys can sell Cubans. We can't do that yet in America. So, uh, for an experience, you need to come over here and smoke Cubans legally? So it's just No, not really, because I've been to Cuba. Yeah, yeah. I've smoked a lot of Cubans. And you can easily get Cubans in America. I just don't sell them in my lounge. Um, here, I mean, it's, uh, I mean, I first experienced the the Dave Diamante experience, uh, Pam Smith stolen uh, for the World Super Series. Yeah. I was ringside and it was the first time. Um, would you say you're one of those stories you took 15, 20 years almost to become an overnight success? Or uh, because no, I think I think that I mean I've been doing this for about 20 years, yeah, close, yeah. close to 20, about 17 years of announcing. Yeah. And um, I've been announced for many promoters over the years. Yeah, of course. And um, you know. A lot of people over here haven't seen it so much before yeah. the Super Series uh, and before Matchroom because they, they didn't get the telecast in America, but yeah, of course. doing a lot of the shows over there. So, um, so I've been doing it for a long time and I was, I was, you know, for me, successful in my own right. I was yeah, very yeah. happy. And yeah. being an NBA announcer for six years. Yeah, the Brooklyn Nets hosted yeah, the show. I, had, I hosted a show on NBC, so I had a lot of stuff going on. Yeah. Um, but it's been going great. You know, obviously, I'm really happy with Matchroom, Sky Sports, that's and DAZN. Um, that's taking things to another level. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I mean, now a lot of people, a lot more people are recognizing me. Absolutely. Um, you've got the unique look. It's a, it, yeah. obviously, I mean, go around the streets of Liverpool, yeah. got people recognize you. Yeah, people. <laughs> a lot. A lot. Yeah, it's been great. I mean, I landed and I went, I went to get a roast. I go straight to the Monroe Pub and immediately Sam behind the bar is like, tell me you're not David. And I was like, oh man. And then I go, yesterday I go to Maggie Mays for Bowl Scouts. They wouldn't let me pay for it. I mean, salt of the earth. These people have been so nice, so generous. Yeah, yeah a lot of people have been recognizing me. In fact, I announced uh, some bands last night uh, up on Seal Street. Um, there was a big uh, thing uh, at Phase One, and I had some friends playing, and uh, the record label guy said, oh mate, can you announce? <laughs> I said, all right, fine. So, um, a lot of comparisons are made in New York and, and Liverpool, things like that. Do you see that yourself as a Brooklyn guy coming to Liverpool? Do you see a lot of similarities between the two cities or...? Between Brooklyn and Liverpool? Yeah. Yeah, I mean, you know, absolutely, because I think Liverpool's an underdog city. Brooklyn's been an underdog city. You know, we're always in the shadow of Manhattan. You guys are always in the shadow of London, you know, but there's so much cool stuff happening here. I mean, Liverpool is an amazing town. I mean, you got the Baltic Triangle, you've got the... The, the Georgian Quarter, you've got, I mean, there's, there's just so much here at Seal Street. There's pubs everywhere, artists everywhere. There's a lot happening, man. It's a buzzing city. Um, there's really, a lot, and of course, all the student scene and the fight history here. Um, you know, I was talking about um, Alan Rudkin. Yeah. And because uh, I went up to the crack, you know, the bar, the crack yeah. over off of Hope Street. And his picture's behind the bar. I was going to say, if you get a chance to go to Lark Lane, John Conti's brother drinks in the Albert pub. Which oh, I does, used to bounce on the door up, yeah. Uh, okay, John yeah. John Conti's brother actually drinks in the Albert, so... So I was in the Rigby, shot, yeah. I was in Thomas Rigby, and this guy, uh, uh, Gerard, he was, the, he was the waiter there. Uh, kind of the barkeep and the waiter. Yeah, yeah. And he was talking about the old school boxing and John Conti and all this stuff. And it was just great hearing the memories uh, that the guys and the, the people had. Uh, of the sport here yeah, and it, the thing is what I love right now is and I was talking about in my intro is that this fight card you got 10 fights on yeah. they're all involved in scousers so yeah. there's a big fight scene here now yeah, it's, what 22 amateur clubs there's, there's a lot of boxing happening that's, so that's, yeah. I love that it's a new second wave I mean obviously I mean clearly the way you scream the passion you're a boxing historian as well so I'm sure the pubs you've been to they've told you the stories of the old Liverpool Stadium the fights that were absolutely so where the Pugsy Road and, yeah. and, and, and Big Stiff and yeah. all, all, this, all this yeah there's a lot of great history here man um, in fact 
even, you know, I wish I wanted to talk about it, but you know, I can't go on for too long in an intro. But Robbie yeah, Davies, got open. Robbie yeah. Davies, his dad was yeah, an Olympian, and his dad, you know, from Liverpool, he's got history. And and that fight, I love that fight because Joe Hughes, man, from Malmesbury, he's you know he was born with her palsy, yeah. and he has done so well, and he's a fighter, man. And Robbie Davies' his fight against Glenn Foote, his father passing, and just the history that his dad being a fighter, and just great stuff, man. So it's it's the stories behind these guys. There's a lot of great, great. It's gonna be a great night on yeah, Saturday. I mean, obviously, it's not your first time announcing in Liverpool, so you you, you, you know. You, I mean, a lot of scouts who watch this, they're gonna love the fact you know your history of the place as well. And you, you, you know your stuff about Liverpool, so I know that's just gonna completely endear to scouts and everywhere. You have already, anyway. But a um, couple of things I've got to ask. You said you were trying scouts. I have. What do you think of it? I mean, ship and miter. <laughs> They're hitting it, man. They're hitting it good. Maggie Mays is great. Baltic Fleet's great. You know, there's a lot of great spots, but uh, I think ship and miter. Um, it's my favorite bowl. I know you're not a drinking guy, but you know about Kane's Brewery. And you, have you been around the Baltic Triangle? Absolutely, yeah. I mean, you've got the, the Peaky Blinders Bar, and yeah. you've got the, the Ghetto Golf, and there's all these. Yeah, it's been great. I've Next been time here in Liverpool, if I'm working, yeah. you get to the Black Pearl, you might see it on the door. I like it. <laughs> Uh, there's so many great spots, and the Baltic Triangle is buzzing. Yeah. I mean, Chinatown and, and, and that whole area over there, there's just so much happening. It's really good, man. Okay, just a couple more questions because I know you're a busy guy, you've got busy, you know, you've got loads to do around Liverpool. Um, British fighters, you, you, you've mentioned Liverpool, Britain on, on a whole. It, compared to the American team, like you said, you, you know, you, you're new ish over in Europe and in, in Britain. Yeah. How do you see the two scenes, the British fight scene and the American fight scene at the moment? Are they short and cheese? Are they very similar or are they different? No, they're different. They're different. I mean, <coughs> they're both great, but I think they're very different. I think boxing's on a high right now. Uh, I mean, America is different because, I mean, we're, we're a lot bigger, right? We have so many more people. So there are a lot of great fighters in America. Um, Obviously, we're having a lot of great fights over there in America right now. But I feel like what's so great about Britain is that you guys have really put in the, you know, you've 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 put in the work to have the fighters and it's paying dividends. And you yeah. see it with Team GB. I mean, even like Pitsy Fowler, both Team GB yeah. guys, Olympians like Fowler and David Price, he was an Olympian. I mean, there's a lot of pedigree here, and it's because. You guys have, have really invested a lot in your boxing programs. And I, I see that paying dividends. And also, I see the Brits really support their fighters. I love that. In America, boxing is not as popular as it is here in Britain. You know, I mean, we have obviously NBA, NFL, MLB, uh, NHL. Those are the four big sports. We do have a lot of fight fans. But if you stop people on the street, you ask them about, you know, someone who's not Mayweather or Pacquiao. They probably have never heard of even some of the, the bigger fighters. Yeah. Uh, where here in Britain, people seem to really follow it. And so I love the fight scene here. I mean, I really do. I'm, yeah. I'm chuffed to bits <laughs> to be over here. I, I am because it's, I'm very honored. In Liverpool, you'd be made up. You'd be made up to be here. Yeah, I'm made up to be here. Um, That's right. Next to last question, we do have a stop qu last question for everyone. Okay. So the last serious question I want to ask you is when people recognize what you do with your ring announcing, the yeah. double name, that throwback to the garden, to Boston, yeah. to LA. When people, I mean, I know that was the, our first interaction on Twitter. Sure. I mentioned it, I was like, how cool is that? And you, you, you were generous enough to reply. How does that make you feel knowing that fight fans know what you're doing? Instead of going, why is he doing that? It's all, yeah. what a nod. What, how does that make you feel when you well, get that reaction? I love it now because it's funny. Um, I did a fight last week in, in London, right? at the top of the box. And I guess, I didn't really hear because I'm in the ring, but supposedly, this someone told me afterwards, they said, I don't know if you heard it, but after you announce the name, the whole crowd announces the name the second time. So you get in that way. Yeah, like the people are, the people are, are really coming into it. And it's I mean, funny. that's almost a pro wrestling reaction, isn't it? I mean, I'm yeah. sure you've heard wrestling announcers, they go, we schedule for one fall, the crowd go, one fall. Sure. So if you're getting that now, yeah. it's the kind of call and response. You're over. Yeah. <laughs> right, exactly. 
But I didn't know, like, you know, to me, I've been doing that forever, and I never thought it would be a big thing. It's just my style that I liked, yeah, and no one else did it. So yeah. I said, this is this is great, I'm going to do this. Right, so if you're watching this, if you're at the MS Bank Arena tomorrow night, the moment he starts shouting the Scouse's name, throw it, <laughs> throw it back, right? That's right. Um, as I said, it, for me, it's been an absolute honour. You, you are on my list of people I've wanted to chat to ever since our first interaction. Come on, I genuinely right. mean that. Because um, I'm seeing you as the. I, when we do our white collar boxing shows, I do the ring announcing. Yeah, yeah, great. So I kind of use a little Triple H one. Are you ready? Yeah. But if you want to steal yours, the fight is now. I don't steal anyone else's. Sure, sure, sure. So I've got my. So I just steal Triple H's because I won't see him anyway. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> um, the last question we ask everyone. Sure. Okay, it's. A good friend of mine who used to do a wrestling podcast in Stockholm. The last question we always ask the Stockholm question What does David Diamante like on his pizza? Oh, I, I'm, I'm a straight, I'm a straight, just regular, like, so I got like a margarita, you know? Yeah, it's like you get the yeah. basil, you get the cheese, the sauce, that's it, you know, that's really what I want. You even say basil correctly? Yeah, like I just want, <laughs> I just want it, you know, just. Just plain. So good. That's what I like. Just a slice. Good. Did you just said the B word? You got to leave it out. No, yeah, that's exactly. No, no, we don't do that. Um, as I said, it's been an honor for me. Um, absolute pleasure. Tony, so Dave, Dave, thank, thank you pleasure so much for having me. Thank you very much. Soon. Take care. House of Scouts. House of Scouts. House of Scouts Television. House of Scouts Television.